Hi everybody, welcome to the latest episode of Middle Age Fat Ass. This week I'm really pissed off and the gloves are coming off. Why? Because this week I want to talk about why it's not okay to be fat and why it is not okay for fat acceptance to pull the victim card every time they are confronted with the truth about the negative effects of obesity. I want to start this video off with a little clip from a TED talk from a woman by the name of Golda Petrosky. She is a motivational speaker and an advocate for health at every size, which we all know is bullshit. Well, she starts the video off by telling one of her own childhood stories. So let's roll that clip. When I was four years old, I was in nursery school, and I went to this nursery school that had this big backyard with lots of toys to play on. But there was one toy that everybody wanted in particular. It was this tricycle, and it allowed you to go really, really fast. Um, and there was one little boy who had control over this tricycle. Um, and in order to get a turn, you had to ask him. So one day, I actually got up the courage, and I asked him for a turn on this tricycle. And he said to me, not yes or no or anything like that. He just said, you're fat. And I cried because I knew even then that being called fat and being fat was one of the worst things that you could possibly be. Um, all I get to say as well, personally, I don't think bullying is right, whether you're fat or you're skinny or whatever. And I'm sorry that she went through this. I really am. I mean, every young girl, every young boy goes through it through elementary school up until the end of high school. But I want to share my story with you. In 1985, I lived in Cottage Grove, Oregon. I was either 15 or 16 years old at the time, and I was a sophomore at Cottage Grove High School. Now, for my age, I was 5'5", five five, which I still am, and I had a medium frame, and I weighed about 150 pounds. Now, according to the fashion standards of the day, I was a little too fat to be in fashion magazines. I was a little too fat to be a cheerleader. But according to today's standards, I would have been healthy. I would have not been obese or considered obese. I didn't realize this then, but I was actually fucking healthy. Because of a certain someone in high school who kept calling me a fat, ugly pig, I actually believed that I was fat. I actually believed that I was ugly. That little pig fucker's name was Dan Matza. This little pot-faced son of a bitch, every chance he got, would call me a fat, ugly pig as I walked down the hallway. Even though I was only 150 pounds at 5'5 five five of the medium frame, mind you, and I was healthy, I wasn't fat, to him, I was fat because, you know, he'd look at Playboys and he'd look at Sports Illustrated and he'd be like, Hey, how come you don't look like the girls are, oh yeah, you're a fat, ugly pig. You know what? Fuck you, you little asshole. If I had known what body shaming was back then, before it was even called body shaming, I would have called him out on his bullshit. If people had been more aware of what body shaming was back then, he would have gotten his ass in trouble and suspended from school. But because this is a patriarchal society, he was allowed to get away with his misogynistic bullshit in the small town of Cottage Grove, Oregon. And because of it, my self-esteem went to shit. And that was not okay. It was not okay for him to make me feel this way. And Dan, if you're watching, I just want to let you know that I pray to God that you don't have daughters. Because I can only imagine them being raised in a house where their father calls them a fat, ugly pig instead of lifting them up, instead of nurturing them and telling them that they're beautiful. Think about that. Think about that when you look at your own daughter at 15 or 16 years old. Think about the damage that you have done to myself and other girls because they didn't fit into your standards. I just want to let you know that by calling me those names, by making me cry, you really fucked me up for the rest of my adult life. And it took me a long time for me to love myself. 
And I only pray that maybe you've actually grown up too. Thing is, every kid goes through bullying and it's not okay. But as I continued to watch Golda Petrovsky's video, I could agree with her on some points where she said that the dieting industry makes money hand over fist. Yes, that is true. The dieting industry makes billions and billions of dollars every year off of people who are desperate to lose weight and be healthy at any cost. But what they don't know is the secret to that is proper diet, proper exercise, and watching what you eat. It's not about the Atkins diet or the fucking Sonoma diet or any other bullshit bad diet that's out there. It's about eating healthy, watching what you eat, watching what you put in your mouth, the amount of exercise you get. And this was another thing that I disagree with Golda on. Let's roll this clip. So what is the obesity paradox? Well, it's this instance that happens again and again and again where obesity seems to have a protective effect. Uh, here are a couple of examples where obesity or fat, I like to use that word, just fat, has a protective effect. Um, one is type 2 diabetes. So people with type 2 diabetes who are fatter actually have a longer life expectancy than thinner people with type 2 diabetes, right? And what do we tell people with type 2 diabetes all the time? Well, you have to lose weight, right? You have to watch your, sh your sugar and your carbs and you, you should do some stress reduction, but you have to lose weight. Well, we're giving people wrong information all the time. Uh, it shows up again and again. It shows up with strokes. People who are fatter who have strokes tend to heal better after stroke, have better post-stroke outcomes. Uh, people who end up in post-surgical ICU, they have a better chance of surviving and thriving after post-surgical ICU if they're fatter. And this is just a couple of instances. There are certain types of cancers where this shows up. There are, there are a number of instances where this shows up. And I want to be clear. I'm not suggesting that thin people should try to get fat. <laughs> for their health. But I think that the point is that maybe fat and thin don't matter quite as much. Um, one is not smoking. Two is moderate drinking or not drinking at all. Three is uh, eating five servings of fruits and, fruits and vegetables a day. And four is getting moderate exercise, like, like 30 minutes of walking a couple of times a week. And if you do those four basic healthy behaviors, weight really doesn't matter. It doesn't correlate to anything. You have the same life expectancy no matter what your size. Okay, 30 minutes a week? 30 minutes a week to just go out and walk and exercise. For a happy, healthy human to be physically active and to not have heart disease, type 2 diabetes, some cancers related to obesity and other health problems related to obesity. You need more than 30 minutes every week. Do you know that I am in the gym six days a week and my health has never been better? Just ask my doctor. My cholesterol has gone down. My heart rate is the best it's ever been. I'm getting toned. I'm getting happy. I'm not struggling to walk up the stairs. As I walk up stairs, I'm doing it faster and I'm not losing my breath. My knees are barely in pain anymore because I am exercising. So to say that a human only needs 30 minutes of exercise a week, I, I personally think that's bullshit. When she says that she's a wellness speaker and an advocate for health at every size, any doctor from the American Medical Association will tell you that health at every size is bullshit and, it's, and it has been debunked every single time. So there is no way you can be healthy and you can be morbidly obese. Now, if there was a physical way that we could be morbidly obese and do the same type of shit that we do, then I would be all for being fat as a personal choice. If you want to be fat, that is your personal choice. Don't be a fucking dick about it. Another thing I've discovered in the size acceptance movement is a lot of these fat girl bloggers will go on and they'll be like, Oh, I was bullied. Nah, 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 nah. Oh my God. Okay, you're whining and you're crying and 
I'm sorry, but you kind of bring it on yourself, kind of like this and woman. Maybe the internet is changing. It, maybe it was easier to blog about fat acceptance and fashion before because there wasn't such an, an organized hate against fat people. You can even look at the forums and they have like these rules, which basically says that it's not acceptable for any other ism, racism or homophobic comments or anything like that, but that it's okay to say whatever you want about fat people. And then at the end it's like, and punch a fat person in the face. I don't, I don't want to be a target for that kind of violence. That's, that's different than just people, you know, just people talking shit about you online or being fat phobic. I mean, this is, this is crossing a line into, this, <laughs> this is really why we need fat acceptance because this is crossing into a line of violence and harassing and online abuse and, um, I, you know, I don't know who can take that. I can't take it. Okay. Now, first off, I am very sorry that her and her family are going through this, but when she starts screaming, we need fat acceptance, blah, 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 blah. okay, you know what? It not only makes you look like an asshole, it makes you look like a militant asshole, okay? This is my take on fat acceptance and other civil rights movements that have evolved over the past hundred years. A human being does not have the choice if they are born black, white, rich, poor, male, female, gay, lesbian, bi, trans, whatever. That is in our DNA when we are born and we have no fucking control of it. That's why true civil rights exist. But a human being has control over their education, their lifestyle, what they eat, how much they exercise, what they put into their body, whether or not they do drugs or whatever. Those are all personal choices. And I'm sorry, I don't see a tweaker on YouTube going, well, you know, I've smoked meth every single day and I don't understand the discrimination. I'm a meth addict and meth addicts need rights. Well, guess what? That acceptance is very frivolous to me. You know why? Because you make the choice to be fat. You make the choice to not exercise. You make the choice to put whatever shit you want in your mouth. You also make the choice to gain weight. You are not a protected class if you make those choices. And to, to compare that acceptance to movements such as feminism and the LGBT movement, to me, that's not a valid argument. And why is that a not a valid argument? Because fat acceptance is a choice. We can't accept one size or the other. We really can't. We need to start accepting health. Healthy comes in all shapes and all sizes. Now, you don't have to be morbidly obese, but you don't have to be anorexically thin. You can be right in the middle and be a different shape than somebody else as long as you're healthy, as long as you don't suffer from heart disease or type 2 diabetes or any other disease that is caused by obesity. And to start with true body love, you need to really start taking care of yourself. Because if you don't start taking care of yourself, then guess what? Your whole body is going to go to shit. So don't whine and don't bitch about wanting special rights because of the lifestyle you chose. You chose to be fat. Nobody else chose it for you. A lot of these women who have signs and marches that say, society, it's society's fault that I'm fat. No, it's actually their fault that they are fat. It is their fault because they chose what to put in their mouth. They chose not to be exercising. They chose to be fat. And that is the point I'm trying to get across. Now, if you're any other part of a minority group, then fight for your rights. Fight for your rights for equality. But if you're fat, change it. If you don't, if you want to stay fat, cool. Don't judge any of us who are trying to be healthy. Don't call those of us who are trying to be healthy vain, selfish, and bitches. Okay? Because that makes you look like a cunt. 
I'm not going to let the anorexic movement off the hook either. The anorexic movement is just as guilty. And the fashion industry is just as guilty. I am getting really sick and tired and getting really pissed off at these, both of these extremes for women because both of these fucking extremes are killing women. And that's not, not okay. That is not okay for me. So if we want true body love, we all need to start accepting each other. We need to stop being dicks to each other based on appearance. We need to stop playing the victim card. And once we all stop doing that and start loving each other, regardless, that is when we're going to have true body love. I want to talk about my progress this week. Last week I was down to 183. And I'm still holding steady at 183. But, you know, it's been a little hot these past few days. And I'm kind of thankful for the hot weather, weather because it's really making me sweat it out. So... If you want to see my progress pics, check out my Tumblr blog. I post a new blog every single week. Talk about, my, talk about my progress. I'll have my current measurements up. I'll have my progress pics. I'll probably post a few funny pictures just to piss people off. I don't know. But, uh, you know, the thing is, I have slowly been losing weight, which is a good thing. Because slow weight loss is actually very good for you. And I'm still doing my regimen of working out six days a week at Planet Fitness. This week, I am once again doing three days of cardio, three days of strength training, working on my arms, my abs, and my lower body. And so far, I'm seeing the results, and I'm see starting to see muscle tone, and I'm also planking, and that's a good thing, too. So if you want to keep up with my progress, check out my Tumblr blog, fatmiddleagedginger.tumblr.com. And before I sign off, I want to talk to you about my comedy channel. For the past three weeks, I have been posting this new show on my comedy channel called Things on the Internet That Make You Go, What the Fuck? And this is where I showcase videos that kind of make you scratch your head and do make you go, what the fuck? Last week I talked about streaking. This week I'm going to be talking about b very, very bizarre newscasts. So you're going to have to stay tuned every Saturday at noon for that. All right, I'm signing off. I will see you guys next Wednesday. You guys stay healthy and you stay beautiful. And I'll see you next time on Middle Age Fat Ass.